Welcome back to the First Row Sports Show, listening on YouTube and SoundCloud. Check us out on Facebook, the First Row Sports Show. It is very easy. Darnell Duff joined by Brady Lang all the way in North Battleford, Saskatchewan. We're chatting NHL playoffs. And Brady, the Toronto Maple Leafs, I know they're near and dear to your heart. They once again took on the Boston Bruins because of this awful format in the NHL. I absolutely hate it. I think it should be one versus eight, two, seven, three, six, four, five. I'm not the commissioner. I don't make those decisions decisions, but if you're a Boston Bruins fan, you're okay with it because every year you face the Leafs in the first round and every year you beat them. You beat them this year in seven games. That must have been an absolutely heartbreaker for you. I know I was with you, Brady, last year when the Bruins beat the Leafs in the first round, and I don't even want to describe what you were feeling, but uh, this must have been pretty gut-wrenching for the second year in a row. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't. You kind of get used to it at this point, which is really sad to say, but it, it is what it is. Like, this time to watch the Leafs fall like that and it's not like they came out flat it's not like they didn't play well it was just it wasn't their night and when it's not your night in game seven it's usually not a good end to the series right and you know what the Leafs still have lots of work to do their cup window everyone says oh it's shrinking it's shrinking oh well, yeah it's shrinking but at the same time who knows what's going to happen in the future right there's always next year and I hate saying that cliche but it shouldn't bother everyone it just wasn't their year and maybe it's because i'm getting a little older or maybe it's because i've just watched too much hockey in my life but when it gets to this point you just kind of have to roll with it right so when you say it's not their year like you look at some of the stats matthews marner marlo nylander and taveras they combined for just two goals and two assists in game six and seven combined and the trio of marshawn bergeron and pasternak combined for two goals and four assists so three guys had more points two more points than five guys for the leafs like if it's not their time now what's gonna change going into next season like sure it's great to make the playoffs you make some extra revenue with people coming in to the rink and that sort of thing but what needs to change like something has to change for this franchise like I think it has to be Babcock um, I know a lot of people are probably infuriated that I say that but what is this guy proving to do in Toronto get him to the playoffs that's fantastic after that he's not proving anything something needs to change in Toronto or else it's going to be the same mediocre success every single year as you limp into the postseason a mid seed and then you lose in the first round like really who cares at this point Well, it's not as far off as you'd think. You look at the state of the Atlantic Division, you have Tampa Bay coming off uh, way more disappointing than the Leafs. What a joke. Honestly, what a joke, though. We're going to talk about that after, but uh, what a joke for the Tampa Bay Lightning. As a sports fan, that was really tough to watch. Like, the best team, one of the best teams in NHL history, and they go out in four straight games. I give all kudos to Columbus, but uh, that was a masterful collapse at its best. Yeah, and... And like I was saying, like you, you got an Atlantic division that's it's always going to be strong. What are the Habs going to make a huge splash this summer? Who knows? But at the same time, the Leafs, they don't really need to change much. They're obviously going to have to change because of Barner's contract. But at the same time, when it comes down to it, it's hockey, right? It's the reason that we watch. It's the reason that we love it. And the thing is that I really see is that Tampa Bay is going to have to take a step back next year whether it's retooling and being more of a playoff team or whether it's retooling and trying to figure out how they're going to be able to sustain their success, it's going to be a lot different. And if they're taking a step back in the regular season, that opens up a spot moving up. And even if it is just getting home ice advantage, that's a lot when it comes to the playoffs. So how much of the Tampa Bay Lightning, you know, disastrous postseason, how much of that is on John Cooper? After a masterful regular season, how much is four straight losses on Cooper not to change enough? I know Vasilevsky was not good at all compared to what he did in the regular season. I don't know if he was playing injured or not, but uh, how much of the blame, if any, goes on to Cooper? I don't think any. Every great team has an off year. Every great, like, that's the thing. Every team is beatable especially when it comes to the NHL. Like, this is an unpredictable game. It's a slippery game, and teams go through slumps all the time. And Tampa didn't. And this was their one time that they actually did slump, and it was we obviously know how bad of a time it was, but at the same time, it's, it's hockey, right? Columbus came out. Columbus wanted it more. They were hungrier. And as you can see by the score in the series, it's, that's just how it happens sometimes. That's the way the cookie crumbles. And I don't think any blame should be on John Cooper. It's, it's just the unpredictability of the game. 
I don't think it's Cooper's fault. Now, I think some something uh, a lot of people are blaming are the referees in the San Jose Sharks uh, Vegas Golden Knights game number seven. When San Jose went crazy, they scored four goals on a five minute major power play. Uh, Dan O'Halloran and Eric Furlat refed in game seven. They are not officiating in round two, and it's unlikely that they're going to officiate for the rest of the postseason. And I find it a little shocking because O'Halloran leads all active referees in playoff games reft with 212, and he's going to miss his first second round in over a decade. What did you think about uh, what happened to Joe Pavelski? Do you think they were right to give him a major when no initial penalty was even going to be called. Yes, I agree it should have been a penalty, but originally they didn't have their hands up for Lad or Halloran. They didn't have their hands up at all. What do you make on that play that obviously ended up being the uh, not the season, but it tied it up, went into overtime, and then obviously we know uh, what happened in overtime for the Sharks? So I went on kind of a rant on the morning show a few weeks back on 1050 CJNB, and it was a lot to do with how hockey is moving. From an official standpoint, you see it a lot differently. So we're starting to call, and I, I'm not going to lie, I don't agree with it, but there is substance behind it. They're calling what happens after the fact rather than what happens on the ice. So it sounds bad, but I still like calling it a little bit differently when I'm refing uh, as an official. But at the same time, it's extremely different when you look at it from a different standpoint. They're calling after the play rather than what happens on the ice. So, of course, we see that he pushed off, and that's a very normal play. It was a cross check. By the rule book, he had both hands on his stick in a fashion in which he pushed off and cross checked it. So there's a check mark. But at the same time, when it comes to minor hockey, you have two options when a player gets hurt on a play like that. So you can give them a two-minute minor and a game misconduct because it's basically one for one. In the NHL, they don't have that. It's five minutes and a game. You can't give a guy like a game misconduct on a two-minute penalty. So really, I understand where they're coming from. It was a penalty by the book. But I don't think that's a playoff penalty, which is the issue that they have. Because playoff penalties, playoffs are called a lot different. When it comes down to it, you don't have that freedom to have a two-minute penalty and still kick the guy out and give it one for one. I think that's where it kind of went astray. But at the same time, like it's heat of the moment, right? And when it comes down to it, that's the beauty of the game. That's why we watch. There's always human error, whether it's... This is going to be a weird one, but this Mark Andre Fleury back in 03 when he was playing for the World Juniors, like that was human error at its finest with those yellow pads. And he skated up and he flipped the puck up and it knocked back in. I can't remember who the uh, attacking player was, but lost it for Canada. That's human error. That's why we watch the game. It's a lot of the same for the officials. The human error is an aspect of the game we do not look at enough. But th- this human error, it's becoming a little bit too much, do you not think? Like, both referees didn't have their hands up, and then they're going to, you know, I know they understand. They talked to the linesman, whatever, who maybe saw something. Maybe it did not, and they gave him a five in a game. Like, th- do you not think this is something that if they're going to do those sort of reviews, there should be cameras involved? Or something like that. Well, if, if the two referees missed it, there's a good chance that the linesman, and one of the referees was right there, there's a good chance that the linesman, I know one of the linesmen was right there as well. It's a tough call um, to make, and I hate that it happened. I know I, I, I was rooting for San Jose, but Vegas, uh, you love their story and what they're doing. Mark andre Fleury, and I love their theatrics that they do before uh, pretty much every playoff game. But I think, I understand human error is going to happen, um, but I think there's ways around it. Like, if if a goal happens, uh, they have video review. An offside, they have video review. I don't like how they can just not make a call and then change their mind and decide, yeah, that is a penalty. We're going to toss this game out. We're going to give San Jose a power play in the postseason. I know you said it's not a playoff penalty. I, I think it is, but you know, it was a cross check in my personal books anyways. But when does it end where they make a human error and then they just get to talk about it and then change their verdict and give a team a five-minute major in the postseason so a big thing that's stressed when uh it comes to officiating is brotherhood and trusting your team out there so when i look at a hockey game i see three teams a lot of people just see two teams and it's a team effort 
And when you're mentioning the bringing in the linesman, you have to trust your team when it comes down to it. I've had situations where I miss a major penalty. I go to my linesman. They are usually the ones that see it first, right? Because they're looking at everything. They're not looking at where the puck is. And when you're the lead official, you're looking at where that puck is going. You're looking at the play. When you're the back official, you're supposed to look at everything. But the, the ice surface is pretty big. And it's, it's tough to see everything. But I did like the aspect of them asking the linesman. Because, you know, as a linesman, you see a lot, especially when you're dropping the puck. And that kind of brings me to another thing. It's human Air, what do you want? Do you want a guy in the sky just calling penalties? What I want, want is like consistency. It's autumn. Well, it's never going to be consistent. That's, but, part of the, that's part of the game of hockey. That's the thing I'm talking about, though. Consistent. When you look at a goal, they have goal review if they don't think it is a goal or if they think it's a goal. If it's um, uh, offside, they have review to decide if it's offside or not. Why can't they do the same thing with penalties with all the technology they have these days? Like Things like this shouldn't happen in 2019 in the playoffs when it's the biggest time of the season. Like The consistency just is not there. And then sometimes you're not going to see that be even called a penalty at all. And that's what really bugs me. This time it's a penalty. We're going to see this perhaps in the next next round or going forward in the postseason or do you not remember in the Capitals game last night against the Hurricanes when the cap center gave the guy a cross check to the face absolutely nothing like the consistency is the part that upsets me the most if you're going to do one thing do it but stick with it and go with video replay it's really not that hard have cameras on the helmet or something like that I know they have the technology to fix this glitch that really did cost you know the Golden Knights their opportunity to for sure be in the second round. Honest to God, like, I get what you're saying, but do you, do you want robots doing games out there? I don't want robots, but it's come to that with the goals and the offside. So if you're not going to have penalties, robots, take those away as well. Just put it strictly to the humans to do their job, just like the players are supposed to do their job. Yeah, exactly. Well, it's it's human error. Like, it's, it's part of the game. And that's okay. And that's just, what it comes down to. It's just the consistency part that, you know, irks me a little bit uh, that they have review about the offside and the goals but not this blatant I don't uh, it looked like a blatant cross check to me but and nothing was called and then they just talk about it I just I don't like it I, I think something needs to change or else the same things are going to happen and it's going to be really bad for some teams like it's really bad for the Vegas Golden Knights like I feel bad for them but uh, gotta give it to the Sharks as well I mean they're the ones who scored the goals on the power play but I, I know you're official and you obviously have some different thoughts than me but uh, that's just something that that's bugged me all day long ever since I've seen the cross check and nothing called and then obviously all of a sudden a five minute major is called i'm just gonna come out and say it. if every one of those people on twitter that are complaining would just put on the stripes and go out and skate and do a peewee hockey game in rural saskatchewan you tell me how hard it is you tell me how difficult it is it's the nhl it's a lot different it's tough officiating is tough 100 percent. okay it's not easy and i get it armchair quarterbacks, armchair GMs. Oh, well, we should trade this guy. We should do this thing. We should do everything like this. Well, there's a reason you're not in power. There's a reason you're sitting there talking about it. When it comes to officiating, there's a reason you're watching the game on TV, and there's a reason you're not officiating the game on TV. And absolutely, and you're 100% right. They could do it, if, if people think that they can do it better, give them the, give them the opportunity. You're you're 100 you're 100 right, and I understand and I agree. The referees in these games they do not get enough uh, praise and linesmen. Like it's incredibly incredibly tough. And I'm not putting this on the referees or the linesmen in this case. They came together like you mentioned as a brotherhood. You look out for your fellow referees and linesmen to help in that position. I'm just talking about the NHL in all. If you're not going to have video review on that type of penalty. Do not have video review at all. That's my personal thoughts. These referees, they work their butts off. They train just as hard as these players. I love what they do. They do a fantastic job. Like you mentioned, it's not hard. And anybody who thinks they can do it should. They might not succeed. They might. All I'm saying is the inconsistency between one review you're deciding you can do and the next no review is happening. That's the part that frustrates me the most. And that's on the NHL. That's not on the referees to decide. That's on the the entire NHL.
Yeah, exactly. And if something's going to be done, it's going to be interesting what they do. They're probably going to handcuff the officials once again. And just uh, literally, it's it's getting to the point where people are complaining to the extent where one day officials are just going to be brainless out there and someone else is going to be calling the shots. Absolutely. And I, I, I'm going to hate it to get it there. These guys are humans. You look on the ice. Sidney Crosby makes mistakes. Andre Vasilevsky makes mistakes. Everybody on Washington made a mistake in last night's game. Alexander Ovechkin did. Everybody makes mistakes, but they still do it. It happens because that's part of the game. I just I don't like the way technology has taken over things. I mean, you hear so many parents saying, you know, my kid is on the PS3 too much or playing too much Xbox and that sort of thing. That's that's just how things are are trending in my mind, and that's the same thing in the NHL. And pretty soon, there's probably going to be a magnet at the bottom of the chip that's going to ring or something, or buzz, or you know, brighten for offside. And I hate, I'm going to hate when that comes to be true if it does in the future. Well, they're moving towards that. You can see it. Like every All Star game, they bring in another little piece of technology that they don't fully explained, but they explain as much as they can. But then you start thinking about it and you're like, that could be used in a different way. But there's a reason why umpires are still in the game. It's the human error. It's a lot easier to detect a strike zone than it is to detect plays in hockey. So if it already happened, it would have happened. Right? That's just the nature of sport. Yeah, I agree. The First Row Sports Show. Check us out on Facebook, The First Row Sports Show. You're listening on YouTube and SoundCloud. Before I say bid adieu to you, Brady, I want to talk about the second round. Just get your predictions. First of all, let's start off with Columbus. They swept the Tampa Bay Lightning, and then the Boston Bruins beat the Leafs in seven games. Who wins this series, and how many games? I'm going to go with Columbus in five. The guys are rolling. Like, they're feeling it, and you know what? It's going to be one of those stories that we're going to look back on for a very long time and just gawk at because it, it it's the magic of hockey and the the blue jackets are rolling and i don't i don't see them slowing down if Bobrovsky can hold up just like if Grzbowski can hold up, it's it's going to be a Columbus win. Well, and you know, a lot of people are wondering, heading into the playoffs, Columbus had to work so hard just to get into the postseason. What were they going to have left against the Tampa Bay Lightning? Obviously, they had enough to beat them in four straight games. I'm going to take Boston in that series in six games. St. Louis and Dallas. Jordan Binnington against Ben Bishop. Bishop idolized the St. Louis Blues all his life. Who takes this series, Binnington or Bishop? I'm jumping on the St. Louis bandwagon, so bad news for St. Louis because every team I pick this postseason, they they're, lost. They're but, done. They're done. Well, I, I honestly believe St. Louis has something special going, and, and that's the thing. Like, If it's a St. Louis-Columbus final, I'm laughing, and if it's probably, it's probably not going to be that, but at the same time, I got to go with St. Louis. They're too good. And they've been so good for so long this season that there's no reason why they're not going to just continuously put that puck in the net and be consistently better than every team that they play. St. Louis had 30 wins. 30 wins from January 1 on in the regular season. 30 wins. Just think about that. That's absolutely incredible. Uh, Carolina, Peter Morazic against Barry Trotz, Ryan Pollock, a couple of local boys, and the New York Islanders. I think this is going to be a juggernaut of a series. I think the Islanders are personally going to take it in five or six games, uh, but I think they're going to be really close games. A few overtimes, and you're probably wondering how I call it a juggernaut of a series if it's not going to seven. I think most games are going to be going to overtime just like we saw Caroline and the Capitals yesterday the third longest game in NHL history in double overtime the Carolina Hurricanes end up stunning the Washington Capitals who obviously won Lord Stanley last year I'm taking the Islanders in this series who do you got I think the Islanders it coaching is important when it comes down to it and we saw that with uh trots last year and I I think he just has the Islanders clicking on a level that we haven't seen since like the Hades, man. Like it's crazy. And I'm going to go with the Islanders too. I I'll say seven games though, just because Carolina is strong, 
They're stronger than everyone thinks they are, and at home, they're pretty hard to beat. Now, Martin Jones and the San Jose Sharks. When Martin Jones is hot, he is absolutely sizzling. In his four wins in the first round, he went 142 for 151. In his losses, he went 43 for 54, and he was pulled a couple of times. He played some awful hockey, but he also had a 56 save performance, a 32 save performance, and a 30 save performance. And in his loss, he made 34 saves, but he gave up six goals and in the other win uh, he, he made 24 saves San Jose is taking on the Colorado Avalanche Nathan McKinnon, Miko Rantanen Kale McCarr who played for the Brooks Bandits a couple of years ago went to UMass this year, he led him to the National Championship Final I want San Jose to win this series, I think Martin Jones needs to be stupendous like he was at the latter half of the first round of their series but Colorado, how do you stop Nathan McKinnon and just to name a couple, McKinnon and Rantan? And how do you stop that duo? I honestly think that this is Nathan McKinnon's coming out party, and uh, he's getting, he's solidifying himself as the top three player in the league. And a big thing with it, like he's got that Jonathan Taves vibe, but he's just a lot better than perennial twenty goal scorer Jonathan Taves. When it comes down to it, I think this is Nathan McKinnon's coming out party, and I'm going to go with the Colorado Avalanche. Like they made quick work of the Flames, and no one really expected that. Flames had some tough puck luck in that series, but I'm going to go with Colorado. I, I like the way they play. I like how fast they are, and I like how smart they are on the ice. And Kale McCarr just brings an, a totally different aspect that you can't replace, right? The round two of the NHL playoffs. It's the best time of the year. Golf and play in hockey. It's Columbus against Boston, St. Louis, Dallas, Carolina, and New York, and the Colorado Avalanche, and the San Jose Sharks. Of course, the Anavet Cup kicks off on Friday night at Stride Place. It's the Portage Terriers as they take on the Battleford's North Stars. Brady, thank you so much for joining. We'll chat to you very soon for another episode of the First Row Sports Show. For sure. Thank you so much for having me on, bud. That was Brady coming in from NB. I'm Darnold Duff coming in from the studios here. And thank you so much for tuning in to the First Row Sports Show. Check us out on Facebook, the First Row Sports Show. Subscribe to us. And, of course, you are listening on YouTube and SoundCloud. Have a great night. Thanks for listening to the First Row Sports Show. Check us out on Twitter at First Row Sports Zero and Facebook. Follow the guys on Twitter at It's the Duffy One and Why Darble.